The following clips are taken from a press conference given by Rosamond Adu Kizzy Deborah following the release of the coroner's report on Ella, her daughter's death. Ella sadly passed away in 2013, aged nine, after years of severe asthma attacks resulting in multiple admissions to hospital. For more information on Ella's story and the Ella Roberta Family Foundation set up in her honour, visit www.ellaroberta.org. With thanks to Hodge Jones and Alan solicitors for the footage. This result today is connected to the inquest into Ella, um, where the coroner found that um, exposure to excessive levels of air pollution contributed to her death. And relying on expert evidence he heard, particularly from Sir Stephen, um, he also found that um, air pollution contributed to the induction and um, the exacerbation of her asthma. Now, that was the death, the tragic death of Ella in 2013. Um, in this long journey, I feel it's another milestone um, for today. Um, and it's it's a chance to obviously thank even people on here who have supported. But I think we will take a moment. What the coroner has also recommended is very important. And he has made it incredibly clear that unless his recommendations are implemented, people will continue to die. And I mean, this comes down to one thing. And that thing is... Fossil fuels are killing us. So we've had lots of discussion about climate change and fossil fuels, and of course that's really important. But this is all about what's happening today by continuing to burn fossil fuels, especially in relation to our transport. Little Ella was living on a knife edge. She had such terrible asthma that just the slightest change in the air she was breathing and the chemicals in it would lead to these terrible attacks, which eventually ended her life. So if it was not for the pollution, she would very likely be alive today. And that's the issue. This is one person who has died where air pollution has appeared on a death certificate as a causative factor. The first in history, as far as we're concerned. And it's not that there isn't massive statistics across the world showing that air pollution shortens life and makes people iller. It's the fact that this is an individual person. And all those numbers that are generated by statistics have these single people at the end of the road. And that is the issue, really. And of course, what we're talking also about here is that air pollution is one of many factors that feeds into the inequalities that exist in modern society. And those most vulnerable are those that have the worst effects from pollution. And so we must generate the necessary change. And that change has to be motivated by having health at the center of any policy development. Or for us at the World Health Organization, as you can imagine, this is a big day because we used to call air pollution the invisible killer. But with what you have been doing there and the, the, the incredible achievement of today, air pollution is a little bit less invisible. And the most important thing, the linkages with the health argument are even more powerful. We have been saying for a long time that the 7 million premature deaths that we have every year due to the exposure to air pollution is an unacceptable public health crisis that we are confronting at the moment. So Ella case is so painful, but at the same time, it will be so powerful to help us to, to convince everyone around the world that this is about saving lives. Well, asking what is your what are your next steps right. is to get it into the environment bill um it me there could be nothing else really because the action needs to be now because people continue to die we've got an opportunity it's coming up i don't know how soon the environmental bill is coming back um but that will be a step in the right direction Everything else, obviously, may take a bit of time. We will have to discuss it, especially concern three about how to educate medics in the future. You know, 
we have to look at specs and things like but the immediate thing really has to be the environment bill and amendments in there we've been pushing it for a year now i feel we're close i had a meeting in january um, with the environmental secretary um, mr eustace and rebecca powell they said they were going away to think about it which i appreciate and one of the things they said is they are waiting for the coroner's report so as we all know now the coroner report is here and i am expecting them to honor that and wouldn't it be great now i have heard that it is f day tomorrow in ella's memory if they just did that um for her i.e that's how urgent it is it needs to be now it's unacceptable um, how to do it we invite everyone to endorse WHO's standards on air quality if the, it can be on a legally binding way even better. Uh, we invite everyone, uh, the government, mayors and others with responsibility to have a healthy urban planning that will help as well to, to reduce air pollution and of course accelerate the, the, the healthy energy transition we all need to more cleaner renewable sources of energy and stop this massive destruction. Uh, tomorrow will be the Earth Day, and I was thinking as a medical doctor, I did the oath of uh, first do no harm, and I'm thinking that we are doing a horrible harm to nature, and tomorrow is the day, so I hope that from now on it, we will stop to do this terrible harm to nature, and we will protect the health of the people in saving lives. We, we are all very much moved by, by this uh, milestone today here, and definitely at the international level, we are going to use it because this is uh, the first uh, case we have of recognizing that uh, air pollution as a cost of, uh, in the death certificate. And this will help us to make air pollution less invisible. So thank you very much. Can I add a little thing here? Uh, this year in November, there will be the COP26 in the UK. So uh, I think we need to make sure that this health argument is penetrating very much the, 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 all the negotiations around climate change, particularly when we talk about the transition to the new sources of energy, cleaner sources of energy, and stopping giving subsidies to fossil fuels and stopping using fossil fuels or stopping new coal uh, industry to, to, to uh, uh, open again. So I think we need to link that message and we need to have the, the society, the, the civil society around this message of health arguments for doing more uh, on, on climate change and, and understanding we are taking their pollution argument very, very strongly from WHO perspective to the COP negotiations. So we are putting the 7 million premature deaths caused by air pollution really in the middle of the COP discussions that will take place and will be hosted by by the UK government, so I'm sure. Can I just add one comment about that? Is that the coroner can compel the government to respond, and I'm sure the government will respond. However, the coroner does not have the power to compel the government to enact, you know, WHO limits or to, to publicly inform about the risks of air pollution. Um, but that does not mean that there isn't a legal obligation, because where there are deaths happening as a result of this action, there, there derives a legal uh, obligation, and I'm absolutely sure that uh, Rosalind will not give up her campaign um, to create an Ella's Law, which will enshrine these sorts of um, these targets and uh, you know clean up the air. It, it, if it can't be achieved in the environment bill, that's the obvious place to do it. But I, I'm sure it will. When you mean to do things. And I, I, I feel today, I, um, Jocelyn and, and, and I, we've, ha we've achieved what we started out to achieve. And I said to people that if Ella wins, every, everyone else wins. And she's won for today.